This is Waves and it's lesson one, Waves Basics. There's a lot of writing on this one, a lot of information, so you may find yourself frequently pausing to make notes, but that's okay. So what is a wave? A wave is a means of transferring energy and momentum from one point to another without there being any transfer of matter between the two points. Describing waves. So mechanical or electromagnetic. Mechanical waves are made up of particles vibrating. Example, sound, which is air molecules, or water, which is the water molecules. All of these waves require a substance for transmission, and so none of them can travel through a vacuum. Remember, a vacuum is empty space. There's nothing there. Electromagnetic waves are made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. So, for example, light and radio. These waves do not require a substance for transmission, and so all of them can travel through a vacuum. So describing waves, two types of waves that we need to know about, progressive and stationary. Progressive waves are waves where there's a net transfer of energy and momentum from one point to another. So example may be sound produced by a person speaking or light from a lamp. Stationary waves are waves where there is no net transfer of energy and momentum from one point to another. For example, the wave on a guitar string. So here's an example of a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal waves are waves where the direction of vibration of the particles is parallel to the direction in which the wave travels. So bottom right hand corner is a slinky and you push the slinky in the same direction as which the wave travels. So the vibrations and the wave direction are in the same direction, they're parallel to each other. So that's a longitudinal wave. A transverse wave. Transverse waves are waves where the direction of vibration of particles or fields is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. So there's an example in the bottom right, using a slinky. So you'll notice that the hand, the person, is moving up and down, and the wave direction is perpendicular. It's moving to the right. So the vibrations and the wave direction are perpendicular to each other at 90 degrees. So displacement x, that is the distance of an oscillating particle from its undisturbed or equilibrium position. So maybe this one to there, or from this point to there. Each part of this wave would be an individual particle that oscillates upwards, up and down, all next to each other. And that, that distance of the arrow is the is the distance, the displacement described there. The amplitude is the maximum displacement of an oscillating particle from its equilibrium position. And it's equal to the height of a peak or the depth of a trough. So the peak is the peak at the top and the bottom bit is the trough. The dash line is the equilibrium position. It's starting point. Phase. Phase is something that we'll look at in a lot of detail next lesson. So it's the point that a particle is at within an oscillation. Uh, phase is expressed in terms of angles uh, up to 360 degrees and also in something called radians, which we'll look at in detail next lesson as well. So I wouldn't worry about this at the moment. So wavelength, wavelength. Uh, this is the distance between two consecutive particles at the same phase. So top of a peak to peak. Or, this would be a wavelength, so from there, so it goes down, up, back to where it started, so that's also a wavelength. Or we could go from bottom to bottom. One full wave, essentially, is the wavelength, length of wave. Let's have a look then. So, a bit more information. Period T is equal to the time taken for one complete oscillation of a single particle on a wave, measured in seconds. And frequency, this is equal to the number of complete oscillations in one second. So measured in hertz, and then the frequency equation is one divided by the time period. The wave equation. 
So the wave equation, wave speed V is equal to frequency times wavelength. So V is measured in meters per second. Frequencies in hertz. And lambda wavelength measured in meters. There's another version of this equation for electromagnetic waves where the wave speed is the speed of light. And for that one, we just use C equals F lambda. Exactly the same units. It's just C is fixed at the speed of light which we should know is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we can do some example questions now using this. So let's complete this. It should be straightforward. If you want to pause and have a go, and then I'll take you through the answers. And then we've just got one more question afterwards. So there you go. This is in milliseconds. So your answer might be 5.88 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. If so, that's fine. And this is 200 kilohertz. So that would be 200 times 10 to the 3 hertz. Or 2 times 10 to the 5. You haven't got the question wrong if it's not written in the same format. So if you've if you've not written 5.88 milliseconds or 200 kilohertz, but still got one of these other answers that's equivalent, that's okay. So let's have a look at the next one. They should have been pretty straightforward. So let's pause and have a go at this. Two points on a progressive wave are one eighth of a wavelength apart. The distance between them is 0 0.5 meters and the frequency of the oscillation is 10 hertz, what is the minimum speed of the wave? Well, if the distance between, is it for one eighth of the wave is 0 0.5 meters, then all we need to do is the 0 0.5 meters times eight. And that will give us a wavelength of four meters. Then V equals F lambda. Very straightforward this, so the frequency is 10 hertz multiplied by the wavelength, which we calculate to be 4 meters. So that'll be 40 meters per second. So a straightforward lesson, Wave Basics, hence the name, Wave Basics. Um, might have taken you a while with the notes, make sure you read over them uh, to learn them properly and in full. And then next lesson it gets a bit more difficult and we move on to phase difference. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.